Hello, everyone. I hope you're all having a good day. My name is Catherine Nemzo, and I'm here to talk about my research in the effect of outer membrane permeabilization on intrinsic resistance to EIPE1 in selected gram-negative bacteria. So a little introduction, um, the occurrence of antibiotic resistant bacteria such as MRSA have been a growing and challenging problem in our healthcare system, uh, creating an urgent need to find and develop unique novel drugs to combat these resistant pathogens. Our lab has been working with a novel hydrophobic compound called eumelanin inspired phenylene indoline 1 or EIPE1 for short. EIPE1's unique characteristic is the melanin-inspired core that provides scaffolding for which various antimicrobial functional groups can be attached. Uh, previous work from our lab has demonstrated that EIPE1 has a gram-positive antibacterial spectrum while the gram-negative bacteria are intrinsically resistant. So that leads to my objectives here. Um, we hypothesize that EIPE1 will demonstrate antibacterial properties in the absence of molecular oxygen and that the outer membrane impermeability underlies the cellular basis for intrinsic resistance to EIPE1 and gram-negative bacteria. So the purpose of our study was to test these hypotheses. So the methods we used was a standard disc agar diffusion bioassay um, under anaerobic conditions to examine E. coli, S. aorus, um, and two different C. difficile strains to determine if antibacterial properties are dependent on molecular oxygen. Um, and then the second method we used uh, was an outer membrane permeabilization bioassay, and we used that to determine the susceptibility of selected gram-negative bacteria using an outer membrane permeabilizer, compound 4880, along with the EIPE1 to sensitize the gram-negative bacteria. So for my results, I did have to run two control experiments first. Um, I had to determine if EIPE1 was still potent after long-term storage. So that's this first result here, and it is still potent. It's comparable to, um, to what it was seeing when we first used it. And then I had to do another control experiment because I had to make another compound 4880 solution. And that's what this one here is. And the new solution I made was comparable to an older compound 4880 solution. So next are the results for my anaerobic disc agar diffusion bioassay. Um, it is a little hard to see from the pictures, so I included a schematic. Um, so the results are a little easier to see. Um, it does depict that S. aorus was susceptible to EIPE1 when cultured under anaerobic conditions, uh, while both C. difficile strains were slightly susceptible at the same conditions. And for my last result, this is the outer membrane permeabilization bioassay with the compound 4880 and EIPE1. Um, so with this, neither E. coli nor P. aeruginosa were susceptible to EIPE1 sensitization by outer membrane permeabilization. The P. multisata, which is this one right, this one right here, appeared to be slightly susceptible. Um, so in conclusion, these data do suggest that EIPE1's mechanism mechanism of action is oxygen independent. And this does also broaden the gram-positive antibacterial spectrum to include obligately anaerobic organisms. Um, and then, moreover, the intrinsic resistance of gram-negative organisms, uh, it cannot be explained based on outer membrane imperme impermeability alone. Um, we, th we do believe that there may be other mechanisms such as multi-drug efflux pumps and or inactivating enzymes. Um, that are concomitantly involved. Thank you for your time.